thank you, Jorgen uh, Herbert, for joining me uh, today uh, for uh, Fireside Chat, it's just the two of us, which is, I, in my opinion, nicer uh, than panels uh, sometimes okay. to have a casual conversation and uh, uh, to talk about um, the role of tokenization and a bit more of this like, you know, mysterious uh, new movement called crypto art and, uh, and, 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 and what blockchain really brings to the table. So thank you very much for, uh, for taking the time. Uh, I think this is a project, a, a project, a subject dear to my heart. So, um, so without further ado, I, I think I, I'm very also interested about your background. You have, as you said, multiple personalities. Yes. Uh, so, so I would love to hear um, where you come from. Okay, uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity. So a short introduction about myself. I'm like, how to explain that? At the moment, living somewhere on planet Earth. <laughs> <laughs> no, but originally I'm coming uh, from uh, Austria, which is uh, in the heart of Europe. And uh, funny enough, uh, because you were asking multiple personas, like, uh, I was growing up on the countryside and uh, it was like, you know, like countryside is like, how do I say it, very traditional. Uh, but in Upper Austria, near where I grew up, we have very something untraditional and it's the Ars Electronica. I think most of the people in the digital art space know that. And locally, if this event is happening, uh, the locals are always saying the crazy ones are back in town. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you can imagine it. It's, uh, if you have I know. People, I I've been uh, many times because I, I'm from Strasbourg originally, yes. so it's, it's so, very so, close. So, so you know, you see, you see it, it's like it's a very small uh, town and uh, once a year a uh, lot of crazy, uh, crazy in the definition of a normal people on the countryside are coming into town and uh, celebrating things digital, which is like very far away. No, uh, for me it was like something which I came across in the early days and uh, I was always interested in, uh, how to say that, in uh, internet technology but more from a perspective of how to say that uh, visually and code and, you know, like in these early days of uh, things like net art, things like this were very interesting for me. And, and I can remember it was like, I think like in secondary school, we had like a project where an artist was coming and she was saying she's doing a project for uh, Ars Electronica and uh, she needs help from some people. And I was like, what world is that? <laughs> like, this was like, you're like, 14, 15 years, you, you, you know, like you understand proper art, but you're not realizing at that time, you you know, it's a computer is just used of digital things are just used for entertainment. And uh, I think that was kind of the first thing where I had a, an, uh, uh, a touch base with things like art and digital art in, 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 a, in, a, in a concept. Uh, later on, I, I got highly interested in how to use like Macromedia Flash. I mean, that was the early days where you were building animation. Uh, animation in the beginning most likely just for like personal pleasure you know to learn something and then uh, like back then I can remember there was like, uh, a guy from he was like similar age to me but he lived in Sweden and his, his name is like fi fake pilot and he produced like generous animation which were more arts than like how to say that like than like uh, animations and uh, that motivated me basically to, to get better in Flash. So for me, it was always seeing something what other people were doing with tools, which was motivating me. And uh, I'm basically, I decided then later on uh, to do a BA in multimedia and design. And uh, you know, like, because to have basically a profound uh, knowledge of that. And uh, I'm always working uh, between, you know, in, in if you're digitally, it's it's like, Back then it was, you were doing everything. It was like sound design, you were learning 3D animations, graphics animations, everything. So you basically had the full set to do what you want. And somehow I, I spent years in uh, working in agency business, but after like doing that for eight years, it was like, it's somehow frustrating <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> and uh, you know, like I was always like visiting Ars Electronica, like was always interested in that field was going on. But I never like 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 think I I would touch more base. But then uh, it happened, uh, you know, after working as a how do I say it as a service provider for years, it's like it's like ridiculous. I'm building like four or five different uh, things, and I know exactly what the client will take, and I have to build three other things because to just entertainment is a waste of energy, like creative energy. And out of that, uh, like my sister at that time, she was in Hong Kong and 
basically I visited her and like, you know, like if you're in a phase of change, you're like, it would be crazy to go to Hong Kong. And then I was seeing, oh, there's something which is called uh, uh, Academy of Visual Arts in Hong Kong, which is basically, uh, they were offering a kind of the first master degree in the direction of uh, visual arts administration. You can imagine it uh, like a little bit like, you know, like Hong Kong, like uh, 10 years ago before the whole art scene moved in, it was like, okay, we need to train people uh, to get into it. And, you know, as, as it will be, so I'm there and I'm like, okay, just fill out the application for the university, like more like as a fun project, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, because, you know, it's like a university. And then somehow two months later, I got contact and I said, yeah, we accept you. And I was like a little bit surprised as well, because the interview was like very short call. Like, but I had a, I have to say, I had a very good reference letter from uh, from a, uh, a dear friend of mine who is uh, into new media arts and so on, and which helped him. So it, it, I was basically, they were impressed that this person is writing me a letter because they were knowing that name. So, you know, sometimes <laughs> you have luck with that. Maybe they, uh, did, did you get actually hired as a teacher more than a student? No, that was not. But to be honest, there was a German guy from Bauhaus University, which was the first year there as a teacher. And he was asked who that German artist is who referred me. And he said, I know that one. He is like big in that scene. So <laughs> I think that helped. So almost, him. almost. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes you do things before uh, where you not know the outcome later on. And that basically brought, brought me back. And for me, it was interesting because, you know, growing up in Central Europe, uh, I, I discovered like uh, the word art and design are completely different. In German, it's called Kunst und Design. But somehow in the English language, art and design is much more closer in, in terms of value chain. And for me, that was like a very interesting experience. And even in uh, like in some languages in Asia, particularly, there's the same word for art and design. There's even no distinguishment. And for me, like, like what I developed from a concept was like, okay, my saying is always art is for the heart and design is for the eye. This is like basically how I, I, I defined it in short to give it a more expression than it is normally seen like in the, in the English language. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was like, for example, you know, like growing up in Austria, art is presented in, how to explain it, in the nice buildings. For me, it's like... Uh, you basically familiar with Louvre, I'm pretty sure. And uh, then this concept of open, opening a Louvre in Abu Dhabi is like, it's misplacement of uh, art for me. Because if I go in Austria into uh, a gallery, it, it has history. It's like, you know, there's history written on the walls and it's the environment. It's, it, and then the things which are there, they have history to the place. And it's not just this place. And for me, it was like, uh, when I'm doing my Master of Visual Arts and Administration, I had an internship in uh, in the Museum of Modern Art in, uh, tai uh, in Taipei. And it was very interesting what they were doing. They, they had basically satellite exhibitions in uh, empty stores in uh, uh, subway malls, which was for me like complete displacement of, you know, like art in a way, because I always find it needs to have the right surrounding as well. But they sold it very pragmatically to me. So, yeah, see it just like an, as an advertisement. Uh, we, we, the, the metro station has empty shops. They don't need to fill it instead of putting something useless there. We put pieces there, which attracts them most likely people to come as well to the gallery and a few more things. And so, so I had a complete different, uh, how to say that, like access to it. At that time, you know, I was involved and, and helped some, uh, some other artists, but more like art administration. So let's mm -hmm. say and then, uh, you know, I finished my first degree and then it was like, okay, what should I do now? And basically I, I wanted to go back to Europe, but then uh, there was, okay, the university was searching for something to do a master of philosophy. And at that time I was involved in, uh, I don't know if you know that in, in Hong Kong, there, there is something called, which is so like designer art toy, pop art toy, like figure based, as a, like uh, explain it like as a modern sculpturing industry. So they are like, uh it's not like it cause you most likely know mm -hmm. and all yeah. these figures basically there's a whole movement around different uh characters and uh the 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 birthplace of this is basically out of hong kong which is very interesting, interesting. because in yeah. hong kong it yeah. was like uh, you know toy industry but the toy industry got more serious and it's it's, it's still like a little bit of low bro art but we see it like with uh the movement of uh, pop culture uh that it's basically moved into mainstream uh, contemporary art as well which for me was like back then I wanted to write something. So why that the Guangdong area or Hong Kong area 
basically was the breeding uh, uh, ground for this new form of art. But then the, and the other topic was how to use social media for non-governmental organization to uh, raise audience participation. So you can imagine, which is easier to get the grant for, it's sadly enough, the version two. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was going down the road with version two, which was like more like on, you know, because I think audience building and uh, how to use modern technology is something which uh, museums back then or like 10 years ago were lacking. I mean, in the meantime, we have seen that uh, museums and uh, like the arts industry has basically catched up with technology, to be honest. But so you see, like I was always somehow into arts, but as an artist myself, not really like, how does it establish it? And uh, it, it happens then like, you know, like when it was like a very crazy, so when uh, I was always involved in net art stuff, but mm -hmm. net art is very like, oh, someone is building a Mozilla browser so that you have the same experience how you can surf in China, for example. It's a plugin which gives you the same experience and locks the same websites or, uh, things where certain pictures are exchanged with artworks, like banners are exchanged with artworks. So I don't know if you can call that art back then, but I think nowadays some of these uh, works are basically seen as art. And one of the biggest problems was always, okay, how to sell that, how to, 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 to foster that. Yeah. And for me, uh, I got then, how to say that, 2014 involved in blockchain. And back then it was like, okay, it was only like this uh, Bitcoins, but that was like simple sending money from A to B. And once I was seeing, okay, there's something like Ethereum, which is called uh, like a, a cryptocurrency or blockchain infrastructure where you can program as well on it. It was for me like, oh, that's crazy. And, uh, you know, everyone was interested because of how to trade things. But for me, it was about, wait, we have something which is called digitalization. And digitalization was taking, you know, text online, it was taking pictures online, it was taking videos online. But what still is missing is how can I take value online? Something with value. So how can I put something online which represents value? Mm -hmm. And uh, following this concept of, of uh, you know, like what is the name, like tokenization nowadays, I mean, people are aware, but still not the mass, but like four years ago, if you were talking about tokenization, it was like a small niche. It's like, you know, the technology was there. You were seeing there's something like a contract where you can uh, put things in like NFTs, uh, but no one was really knowing what to do with that te this technology. And uh, basically, you know, when CryptoKitties came up, it was like, okay. But for me, it was completely clear why it worked because, you know, it's like a very close ecosystem. And uh, people then were thinking, oh, that's the new game. And uh, people were rushing in and then they do crypto unicorns and crypto talks and crypto cars. And mm -hmm. it's like, talks. yes. And it's like, 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 like very, I was thinking it's crazy, but in the end, it's just something like, which has to do with collectible. Yeah. And uh, I, I can remember like a discussion with a dear friend of mine in Hong Kong. He's like, a, how to say it, an Austrian, which lives in Hong Kong since a long time. And he's uh, very involved in the Hong Kong culture scene as well. And I say to him, why we are not like building something where we're taking artworks and issuing a digital certificate and put that on the blockchain? Because, you know, in China, there's like a lot of fraud in our art. And basically the person who owns the unified, uh, how to say that, certificate, that's the value. So mm -hmm. even if it's a fake picture you're holding in the hand, but if you have basically the, 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 the digital certificate, that's showing the true ownership of it. So, you know, what would be the value to have a fake uh, 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 artwork because it doesn't make sense because you don't have a digital representation of it. Uh, maybe someone is exchanging the original and was a fake one and it can say he has a hanger at home, the, the real one, but still the fake one would go on. But you see like at that yeah. time, it was not thinkable to do it now. And I think uh, when the whole thing uh, struck, it was like, I think last year at that time, uh, let's say it more experimental designers, I think were trying it out to sell them, you know, because people were seeing you can sell like images or baseball cards. And then it was like, wait, why can we not sell uh, something like digital art through a system like this? And uh, to be honest, what I think uh, what was happening is Back then, uh, it was still a technical hurdle. So I always wanted to issue something, but I, how, how to say that? I stopped doing programming 10 years ago. 
So for me, it needs to be something, and I always say this to all the programmers, in the crypto space, in the blockchain space, you have the speculators and you have the programmers. You don't have anyone in between. Mm. And uh, where are the people who are building useful products? Where are the people who are building useful services? And for me, I think the first touch I came across was OpenSea. And once I was seeing OpenSea, I was saying, oh, finally someone understood how these things are working. It needs to be working very, very simple. Basically, everyone is just able to send a, how to say that? Send an email should be able to mint a token. I mean, and I had a very, 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 uh, how to say that, good experience. So recently, I'm, I'm talking with someone online uh, who is buying digital artworks on uh, Super Rare. And he didn't know what NFTs are. Interesting. Which was like, Nice. Very interesting. And I said, yeah. that's exactly what I want to have. He doesn't need to understand the technology below. He understood, okay, this is a unified identifier, which gives him like as a digital certificate. And he was really interested in the art. And it was like, really like, he didn't know it. And, and basically, because, you know, on these platforms, you can pay as well uh, uh, with your credit card. And basically, yeah. he's playing his own ecosystem because you don't really need to leave a uh, super rare platform. And uh, that I found like astonishing because, you know, that's like in a direction where I think, okay, people understood it. And uh, it's, it's, it's a new audience, which is not tech oriented because everyone else was tech oriented. And if you were listening to the presentations, the crypto kids founders were giving about how many people visited their website and how many people struggled to buy them because they didn't know how to interact with MetaMask or anything is like astonishing. So they lost yeah. I think like 90% of the people who wanted to buy something, they lost. Yeah, it, it took me three hours the first time I tried a crypto kitty. So exactly. <laughs> not ashamed and, and, to say it. <laughs> and, and this is this is because you're interested in it, so you 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 you, you it, want yeah. to explore it. But, but so normal... let me let me sorry let me start, like um, uh, focus on on that for one second because um, and it, it's funny that you I mean this is the first. Uh, uh, collectible that was like not in the limited edition but like the first collectibles that like main like mainstream media like yeah. knew was crypto kitty uh it's funny because even to this day it's still the example that people use at art conferences and to me it's the worst example it says i i understand you can't you we start with the start but you should not talk about crypto kitty because then art people are like it's a cat. Like, we hear about the cat. Like it's a, it's a stupid cat. It is a stupid cat. But these cats are very valuable. And 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 so let's let's tap down the, this cat and and go like from the cat. How did we go from? Fine. Like maybe it's just speculation on the cat. Yeah. But like uh, right now, and you mentioned super rare and open sea. Some works by some uh, crypto artists go for a lot of money. Yeah. So you mentioned that like um, this is kind of the person. Let's use that person you mentioned on Super Rare. Who doesn't know how it works? Yeah. Just knows that blockchain allows uh, and like the token allows to have a unique, scarce, rare yeah. piece of art. Why would he pay uh, some money for for the art just for the aesthetics, okay. or you know, like cause not only scarcity enters? Into okay, there, there's, there's, I think that's a, there's a hard. So I have a master of philosophy, so I could give you a very uh, a broad. Uh, Please, thing. I like love so, talking about so that. I have a theory why that happens. So, why do you buy a yard which costs forty million dollars US? It's not rational. But it's a statement and it gives you access uh, into a club without uh, showing that you have money. And there's something, I think you're familiar with crypto voxels. Yeah. Crypto voxels is like a very interesting place because it's built by an individualistic person like Ben. So as much people liking, as much people are controversial to him. And because, you know, it's like a two person team and he's basically building it on the fly and you are, He's an artist. Let's say this. He's in own, he's in own way an artist. Mm -hmm. And interesting was, so I came across CryptoVoxels 2000 and uh, last year, 2019 in April. Maybe and you should explain what it is for people who don't know CryptoVoxels. So, so it's basically a three-dimensional, uh, how do you say, a VR a metaverse where uh, digital art is presented in digital galleries, actually. That's the most use case for it, actually. And uh, somehow the whole crypto art community is very 
active in it and is also to one of the largest landowners in there which is crazy yeah. but uh, what, what you're seeing is like there are so multiple dimensions of community so if you enter that space so like i built an artwork uh, it's called bitcoin halving like uh, no bitcoin uh, scalping back in 2019 in may and it is sitting on one of a parcel which is close to the center so what is the value of that artwork it got sold literally for 2000 yes dollars the value out of it derives it was one of the first pieces which was using a whole parcel to build a sculpture and it was basically one of the oldest pieces which was just standing there so the question is it's it, what, what's the value and because the value is a combination of where it is placed in this universe but also so that it has uh, stood there for a long time you know like it's basically the question what's the, the, the value for uh, old artworks it yeah. derives through time and because it was done kind of the first way like this and if you talk about the uh, famous names uh, which have derived uh, out of that universe and why someone is paying even like more it's also to you know uh, like there are people in this industry in the blockchain industry which uh, have had luck to have how to say that get access to capital in a in a way because they were early in so but what was happening and it's the same for me so years long if you were not a programmer you not had your home if you were not a professional trader you not had your home but somehow like me as well as a creative person as a technology oriented creative person you felt home because it was the first time about creativity and so you were seeing someone is really putting effort into it and so it's like a you know like in the ancient time like uh, in the early days uh, like you know michelangelo or so how did they basically become an artist they had someone to pay them or like in in, in german it's called a patron patron yeah, patron yeah and i think like a lot of things uh, what we're seeing now in the crypto universe is also to link to patronage yeah because some of the crypto artists uh, they how to explain it my perception and some of them will kill me now have the advantage of being in early that's always a big advantage but being in early doesn't mean you know you're standing the time and, and 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 definitely some other ones know how to promote them very well and some other ones are really experimental and uh, as the scene is very small let's say it like this we uh, i don't know how familiar we are there is a handful of people which are basically like working like traditional artwork let's say white cube gallery is featuring one artist it means all the other galleries are running behind that as well and it seems for me it's looking like a little bit of a this as well like here if a certain collector is buying from a certain artist that shows something which attracts and other ones as well so you have basically i, I always call it the it, it's it's always a copy of, as everything digital is a copy of other systems so it's working with the same systems mm -hmm. and uh you know like you have those crypto artists which are represented by proper galleries so they are basically prop better managed so they maybe have more reach other ones are controversial because they did something and i think what makes it why someone is paying two thousand or four thousand or even ten thousand us dollar for some pixels it's just because they can or uh because they they value what the person is doing because you know uh, some of the crypto artists they are very active in 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 different fields so so and and what you're seeing here so if I'm pretty sure this is where all the crypto artists will agree. If I'm a top crypto artist, I will use some of that money I was getting from my buyers to buy other ones' artworks as well. So yeah. you have basically like a whole economy and it's like, you know, like exactly how it should basically work. So the artist becomes also the collector. Yeah. I think that's maybe different in the traditional artwork, but if you look at something like a Damien Hurst or so, He's also a collector, he's a promoter, he's an artist, he's a curator. And you see here as well, like, you know, yeah. like. But see, it's like, for me, it's, um, I mean, and, and your, your analogy with Damien Hirst is, uh, is, is true. And, uh, and I'm very glad you started talking about this, uh, this community because, um, because for me, this is also part of the value, like that, uh, you know, an artist is involved, uh, is active in the community, not only was early, like that's also important for capital, but 
uh, but is also contributing uh, to um, anything in that community. And I think this is where I would uh, make the analogy with what I'm excited about for this like new new crypto art like little group is that it's like witnessing uh, the um, birth of a new art movement. When yeah. you think about like even net art or even before uh, 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 you know impressionist or something it was the first community it was artists supporting artists supporting artists and and i know we're like my split personality is like oh my god we need more people we need more like investors and so on but it's precious what is happening right yes. now no, no no for me i give an idea so like like some of the portals are like really beyond so like i'm pretty sure everyone is like, like you, you hear about uh what super is doing at the moment where they're starting to, you know, for me, it was like, what I'm specialized in crypto is like 3D sculptures, because for me, it's like, I like the three dimensional environment. And to be honest, I find it sometimes crazy to just take static pictures on a three dimensional wall. It's like, I don't know. It's like, it, 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 it it's, I can understand it and, and, and I see it. And, uh, but in another way, it's also to like, that's like the minimum you can do with this medium. Like, if we have yeah. like a fully fledged universe and what I'm doing is like two dimensional. And I don't know if you're familiar with uh, like uh, what's called the Google tilt where you can uh, draw like a tilt. Is it, I don't forgot the name. Yeah, Which well you can tilt. draw in, in yeah. 3D. And yeah. You cannot imagine. So a lot of people are talking about it. And I, I started with like, I like this concept from an artistic concept. You have pixels and like my work is also always using pixels like sculptures. I like the roughness. Because it represents basically, you know, everyone can do like uh, non-edgy stuff. And for me, it was like, I need to, basically, it's three people say, Jürgen, you need to buy like uh, Oculus Quest to do this. And I was like, okay, let's do it. And I, I just bought it like a couple of days ago. And I like, I like going crazy. Like, <laughs> this is because, my, uh, you know, it's my project for the summer. So we should, uh, we should extend on that. Yes. Because I also got uh, a good one. And I need, uh, I, I want to build in uh, Unity and Spoke and, and, and do more. Of, it, 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 it's, it, it's like, for me, what I'm still missing is, is like the collaborative building. Because it's non-linear building. So like, I'm in my Oculus Quest. You're in your Oculus Quest. We're in the same space. Everyone has his painting tools. And you can paint collaborative in real time. That's for me, yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, and, it's... Yeah, and, and, and if you were asking why someone are paying, so what I'm seeing is like there are different people coming into this crypto art movement. So you have people which are coming, uh, because the question is what is crypto art per se? So if you're very strict, it would, would be such involves something critical, which is related to anarchistic approach. So it's not because the other one is technically tokenized art. So I'm just using something and yeah. tokenizing it. So you're so, using the cyberpunk more like yeah. So, so, so because the original uh, crypto art definition was like this, but the, the word is getting basically uh, commoditized and utilized for the whole space, uh, which is not bad to be honest. But I think what uh, for me the question was, and we had recently a discussion among some people. So I'm uh, doing something like this in Austria, and you will not believe how many other Austrians are doing this as well. So even in Austria really? alone, there are six people which are active in the crypto art space. So we have now like a small community of German speaking people, which are around 25 people, which are all doing crypto art and which basically it's a space where, which is still small enough that you find your peers and you communicate with people, you know, everyone has his own online persona. And I talked with one guy like for weeks and then I realized, wait, his name is Bullauge, which means like, you know, in a boat, this round window. Yeah. Why are you having a German name? And I asked, are you German? And he said, yeah, I'm Austrian. <laughs> you know, like this, because yeah, the, whole, the whole communication is in English. I know, yeah. Uh, this is and, why, you know, we organized a, an exhibition on, a, on crypt, Italian crypto art uh, for an Italian hackathon, Easter yeah. In April, and and I had been discussing with a lot of the artists before, and the curator, like with uh, Eleonora, who was in Rome, like put the exhibition together without me. And then I looked at the artist and I was like, "Is he Italian? I had no idea." Yeah. Like, uh, so it's, it's uh, what's his name? Hecato is also Italian. Yeah, they live yeah. in a small, tiny village. Like yeah, but with, but uh, I I think you see exa exact exactly uh, so the work he's doing is like. Uh, uh, like, like, I think he, you know Toki Toki? I know. Simon, Simon Legno, the, 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 the Italian, which is like in uh, pop culture, pop art. 
Okay. Uh, he's, he's very commercialized. Like, you know, he's making these unicorns. Or like, uh, it's like more like Murakami, but for kids. Mm, okay. And he's also doing Italian. And, and, and you know, like, like the, the thing about what, what Hakato is doing is like coming out of this, I think, he, I don't know, I'm not sure if he was part of this vinyl toy movement, you know, Kid Robot? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so people were painting like kid robot figures. And a lot of this, you know, like how is it art, is it not? That is always questionable. But for me, it's basically what I'm responding to and what makes uh, yeah. fun. I mean, this, this could be another hour of discussion. What is art, what is not? Again, yeah, as like, I told you, like the next person who says like the artist is selling their soul to the devil, I'm yeah. going to like rip no, and, my and, screen and, off. And, <laughs> and what I was finding interesting is like recently, like how quick someone gets recognized. So recently there, there was a Greek artist and uh, I forgot his name. He will kill me because I talked to him and I forget, I'm not too good in names. But what he was doing, uh, you know, through the crisis, people, traditional artists were looking as well, how can I sell my work? And, uh, you know, he was like, he's, he's, he has like a very mechanical style because to be honest, like if you, the actual collectors, I think, which are collecting crypto art have not all the, average profile a traditional collector has and now i'm critical what profile does a russian rich guy have to collect art you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh so i'm completely accepting it and, and and what you were seeing that guy basically he had a great work and i i saw it as well and i was knowing instantaneously if he's getting recognized online and he was active on twitter active in in, in the virtual worlds he was on the platforms the community will like what he's doing. And uh, because the art, how he presented it, how he communicated it, it was just very, very interesting. And I think at the moment is uh, the biggest challenge I'm assuming is for traditional artists to enter the space. Because I think it's not only, as you said before, you, you know, if in the traditional artwork, it's also not only to be uh, producing it. It's also about the whole, do you go, do you have your community? Do you communicate what you're doing? Uh, do you have your, how to say that? Do you have your shows? Uh, are you consistent in your, in, in your body of work? Because, you know, in crypto art, something is like this. Yeah, I can make things like this. And then I look at the portfolio and I say, there is no consistency in your uh, picture. It's, it's not just, you know, like taking a picture, making it flicker and putting it online. Yeah. There is no, and, 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 you know, like, it's like with, if I'm, and I'm not, if I'm putting a, how to say that, a, a, a car on the, flipping a car and putting it in a museum, it's useless, it's worthless. If Damien Hurst is flipping a car, putting it in a museum, it's worth $10 million. But how so then? Because then let's go back to, okay, this is Damien Hurst who has a reputation versus uh, there is a narrative behind it. And I do want to go back to, um, the role of curation and the current yeah. platforms to see if something has changed with blockchain or if we're just back to marketplaces. I, I, I think like, like uh, you know, like selling something digital is not new. So we have something like Sedition Art and there are like two, three other platforms as well. But I think what like Sedition Art, so I have my Shepard Frey there, I have my Damien Hurst there, but I call it just an expensive stick album. Because the problem there is it's, you know, like the high end art market is like, um, for me, prints are already critical, to be honest. And this is like an edition of 10,000 of digital Damien, Damien Hurst dots. That's like, you know, that does that really is a value? You know what I mean? It's like, there's like, it, the, the edition is too large. I have the feeling and uh, the involvement from the artist is too large, too less. It's like, Sedition art basically licenses yeah. a digital license. You know, there's some people maybe find it interesting, but for me, there needs to be something more. I like more to support someone uh, which sits in Italy on the countryside and does uh, what he wants versus uh, to having a, you know, th that's not a statement because if you collect certain artists, that's also the statement. And, you know, the, the disadvantage of digital artists, like here, I cannot hang it. You know? So technically, there is no value for some people, they would say. But uh, I can show my, my portfolio to other ones. Other ones are seeing what I'm having in my portfolio. So it's a little bit also to like, uh, if you're in this space, you, you know what are the addresses of certain people. 
what are they buying? What are they liking? So it's uh, imagine it, uh, you have a complete open uh, visibility. What is selling on the market? Who is collecting what? Uh, what are the trends? Because sometimes, you know, something is trending and then it's like not really trending. And, and, and it's also too interesting because it's digital. So is this a difference if I'm selling a unique item? Is it a difference if I'm selling like a series of 50? Is yeah. it, you know, like there, there are questions. So like the, the, it doesn't mean like, I don't know if you hear about trash art in this space. No, well, I mean, in no, general, no, no. but is that a specific thing? No, no, basically it's basically don't spend more than two minutes to build an artwork and sell it. I mean, it's a own form of art, you know, like, are you quick enough to make in two minutes something meaningful from Samsung is willing to put money in? Yeah. And, but you need to understand that what I'm thinking. It's a, uh, there's a serious market and there's an experimental market. And crypto art per se, I think is at the stage, I call it always the art market is most likely smaller than the whole art market of a French mid-tier city. You know, in terms of how many artists are there, how many players are, but it's digital. So the potential is that this universe is growing to be globally. Yeah. The question for me is, you know, uh, I don't know, like, uh, Saatchi online gallery, most likely you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. So I don't have no feeling how they're the communities. For me, there is no community. You know what I mean? No, I it's, think it was just individual artists like benefiting yeah. from a big name to advertise the work. But yeah, and it, it's like for me, it's like everyone can publish there, but doesn't mean it's like YouTube, you know, that yeah. the problem is democracy. So like crypto art per se means I don't need a gallery. I don't need anyone. Basically, I can do it on my own. But what we have learned in the past uh, in digital, and I, I lived through this multiple times, uh, it's about um, attention, as sorry as it sounds. We, you know, we are living in an age about attention economy. And it doesn't mean because I can now put my video on YouTube, it will have 10,000 of views, even if I have a very good quality. If I don't know how to get attention, I'm getting lost in the universe. Maybe see, if you put a cat in there, you might be... <laughs> you know, but, but, <laughs> no, just joke like, aside, yes. It's not... No, uh, Sorry if I'm uh, starting that. You most likely know, uh, not Pinterest, I was on Etsy. Mm -hmm. So how many people you know who want to run and sell handcrafts or, you know, craft art on Etsy? A lot, because there's this dream, you sitting at home and get money by doing things and selling it to the internet. But in reality, it's only a very small amount on the top which earns money. And the question is for me, is crypto art going to be the same? Basically, you have a massive amount of long tail. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and what I'm at the moment, sometimes a little bit of um, uh, sad is you have, to, so <laughs> some people maybe kill it. You have already established names, but every show is presenting the same established names. Because, you know, like in traditional art, you have certain cycles. So like people uh, getting presented, getting push let's say this way and and they're then they're moving up the level but in crypto art i think it's at the moment it's a little bit of a recycling the same artists are, are represented at the same shows uh so and, and if you talk about it so, so so i still want to see how this can evolve in a, in a better way to be honest i think this uh, i mean that's very true and and i'm wondering if it's uh, um um you know two things it's like either um there are not that many like supply like and a number of artists actually like working seriously in that space or um we're also like i think about to question like the um the goal and the role of the platforms because yeah. the whole point of blockchain and you said it like i'm a crypto artist i could do it by myself but can i because there is still this uh, like representation and uh, i have and I marketing have I have to be honest. So assuming there's a crypto artist, if I'm going on super rare, uh, maker uh, place, rareable uh, mint base, I think they're the four bigger ones. So if I forgot someone, uh, uh, known origin, uh, and I think, sorry? OpenSea as well. Yeah, but I tell you why OpenSea is different. Okay. So uh, the biggest one I'm assuming, and, and don't kill me anyone, I think it's super rare. In terms of traffic, in terms of uh, volume, was well, flipped over. Then it's Maker Place, then it's something like Rarible, and then it's Mint Place. Some of them have features, some of them have advantage. For me, it's like I'm 
I want to control what I'm doing. But it's a trade-off. So if I'm uh, launching on uh, OpenSea, I'm responsible for my own advertising. Because on OpenSea, it's hard to be discovered. On okay. Super Rare, it's easier to be discovered because you know you are in the in the, in the uploaded list. People see you, and there's a community around it. And uh, Super, so basically, I think some platforms like uh, Super Rare, Rarible. Mintbase maybe less, but all those uh, things they have like the function what uh, a combination of what a gallery has actually. You know, it's a filter. It's like like on Super Rare now because you know with blockchain and democratization and everything, it's not basically because there is the person who is controlling. Are you good enough to launch on Super Rare? You know, now it's like going through an application process. Everyone is complaining at the moment that the application process takes so long because they have, I think, thousands of applications. But you but, see like, I'm sorry. But again, I think this is kind of where like, this is where we have to question the role of the platforms, right? Yeah. And uh, like, because are they, do they have the um, um, like, valid, uh, like validation or like, should they be the curator really? Um, I, I, think, I think to be honest, not, but uh, they make it, just easy to onboard an artist. Mm -hmm. So as an artist, the easiest one is to onboard through a platform like this. Because you know, it's like, as an artist is the questions, how much do you focus on your art? And how much do you focus on promoting your art? And- But, but see, this is like where at the beginning, and I don't know if you had that same feeling, but in New York, like maybe two years ago, when we were having like art and blockchain panels, but first it was always the same, like we had Dada, I was at Snark, there was, uh, um, you know, super rare and maybe yeah. a person from a platform that disappeared. And every time the question of curation happened, there was this huge backlash in the room being like, oh my God, you're being centralized. Like this is not decentralized. And I think yeah. now we, we're not even talking about it anymore because it doesn't work at scale like right now. Like, so yes. I'm wondering what you think about that. I basically, you know, like uh, if you are uh, like centralized and decentralized, the token is decentralized. Yes. But it's also not true because on rare and super rare, I don't own the token. I don't own the contract. Yeah, they're smart but contracts. But this, this is basically what does it mean to be a purist? You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. a purist would be even I'm not launching an open sea because somehow it's open sea contract, but it's my own contract and then the purist would launch his own contract would launch the pictures to be stored on ipfs that's and so like the purest crypto armies it has to do something with bitcoin uh, ethereum whatever crypto related hodl hodl gang uh is issued by a own smart contract and is stored as ipfs i think you can't get purer but for the sake of comfort profitability and reachability, people are cutting that off. This is this discussion, like I have a lot of discussion, in other areas, centralized social networks and decentralized social networks. No one cares that Facebook knows everything. They care about a government app which controls your uh, tracking because uh, of Corona now, which has less reading light, rights and uh, rights on your app than your WhatsApp, but no one cares about WhatsApp. Right? But yeah. that's a different discussion. And I think in, 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 uh, in the space for me, at the moment, the function uh, of the curation is happening not 100% by the gallery or the platforms. It's more like by those people who are buying it, to be honest. Because, you know, it's, uh, how to say it, like we have something very good and bad, or I don't know, it's rankings. I don't know if you saw it most likely. It's like yeah. all the platforms has, the guy who has invested in most of the artworks and the guy who has uh, sold most of the art in value. It's not in pieces. It's about how much yeah. ether was paid. And that's the question. Is that an indication of a uh, quality art? No, not really. No. But see, like, uh, I mean, I, I, uh, to quote one, uh, one experiment that non-origin did um, that I really liked was to partner with Mogda, uh, the Museum of Convergent Digital Art, to do like a featured selection, you know, like it was a short term, like one week uh, selection. And for me, like this, like having a curator um, helping the platform and maybe multiple curators is way yes. more powerful than saying like, 
oh, I'm buddy with this guy and, you know, so he's on my you, path. You have a very good point. So for me, it's like this. So uh, as I mentioned before, like this three-dimensional spaces like CryptoVoxel, Decentraland, Somnium space, galleries are the most built buildings there. Mm -hmm. But there's a difference. They are not galleries. They are private collections. Yeah. Because most of the galleries in this universe, they are not curated. It's people, like in, in Austria, we have something like nearby where I'm staying now, Essel collection. It's a rich guy which had a lot of money and he built his own collection and he built a building and it's inside there and you can call him and then you can visit him and he's opening and he's showing it. And it's like what happened there as well. So what I was trying, like, like or what we are trying at the moment, we, 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 so funny enough, I got the domain nft.art. Oh, you got it. Oh my God, you got it from me. I was gonna, I was gonna buy it. <laughs> like, and then, you didn't like, buy it? No, and like, it was a week. Like, to be honest, I was gonna get it, and then something happened, and then it was taken. I so it was it. you. Oh my God. <laughs> when I bought nft.art, it was like, I need to have that to make. No. <laughs> can you sell it to me for a million dollars? <laughs> we can discuss that. It yeah, depends what plan is. No, and, and then I was like, you know, like uh, I, I, I'm familiar with how to do 3D building stuff. So we were starting to build galleries uh, in uh, some of these virtual worlds. But our concept is different. So because, you know, some of the artists do not know how to do it. And for me, it was the question, can I open a gallery which is basically completely acting uh, digitally? Mm -hmm. You know, like, why not? I mean, what's, what's the difference? It's like, but the question is, do I find a curator who is happy to do it? Because it's also a little bit experimental. Yeah. But for me, it was like, you know, running around in these 3D worlds and I know, yeah, there's this gallery, but it most likely it's just a consistent exhibition, nothing temporary. And for me, it's also to like, uh, I was then like brainstorming, you know, what I can do, I can build a three-dimensional gallery and Basically, with the press of a button, I can change all the pictures in the gallery. Yeah. With the press of a button, I can change all the walls. So, you know, you have this idea of there's someone who built an experience. And like, if, uh, if I have an exhibition in the real world, it has a fixed time and then it's ending. But in a digital space, I could make them unlimited availability. The question is, do I even want that? Because playing with scarcity is also something interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's urgency as well. Like something yeah. that's always there, like and, might and, not and, be and, interesting. And, and so I was, I was thinking that, like, as you said, like curation is still a, a big thing. And there's some groups of people like uh, who are doing like art walks, you know, this concept of a traditional art walks in, uh, in something like virtual spaces. I think there's already something developing, but, you know, it's still not there where let's say this way, a professional gallery is like doing this like full time and entertaining their existing customer with it. Because I think it's, it's uh, like if you're on this art works and I participated in something like, like in the physical world and in the digital one, uh, the digital ones have basically, it, it's an entertainment experience. And it's a very different experience than uh, uh, passing through it on your own. You know what I mean? It's curated. Which, which, which gives you also to a very nice perspective. And I think some of the collectors like this. And for me as well, like, I like this because it's like, I'm getting presented from someone I trust because you know that person. He has a several, same mindset, but I don't have the mindset to screen to thousands of, art, uh, of artists. And uh, this is what I find interesting. So there is an economy actually developing around this, but it's very early stage. And uh, we will see definitely, how to say that, I, I would like to see much more, but because, you know, like through in Corona, you saw what the galleries were doing, the traditional ones. They're using the iPhone and scanning up their physical space and putting it three-dimensionally uh, on their website. I don't know how you feel about that experience. It's very basic. It's basic. I mean, I think this is kind of where, um, you know, I, I was talking to Sylvain Levy, who is working with like his collection, like the DSL collection. He um, he is doing like a full VR experiment. Like we uh, at Kadaf, like we went with like a, a digital native solutions for what we liked at art fairs. I think this is kind of where we have to experiment. I think this is kind of the silver lining of, uh, of COVID-19 is that like to be able to augment 
physical in-person events with better technology. I think this is kind of oh, where I really hope that people don't have short-term memory loss and just go back to just. Oh, no, I mean, people. we have to be honest here. Like, like as so as so as uh, traumatically as, as actual events are, but for something like what we are talking at the moment, it was basically a, how to say that a black swan event to get kickstarted that this industry needs to think about what's the future of it. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah, because, yeah. Because, you know, the, the crypto art movement as well, it basically, I don't know if that's correct, but my observation, it started to grow the last half a year. Yeah. Before it was consistency and now you see grow, 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 like more artists, higher prices. I think, I don't know if you hear about Whale Shark. Yeah. So, that I'm, on guy, the, I'm on the Discord. Yeah, so that guy basically is also a very interesting person because he is a distortion in the market. But that distortion in the market uh, showed some people who were observing the market and uh, it was a stimulus for them. Yeah. You know, they were seeing, oh, there are people really putting, uh, I mean, for the real art market, it's still peanuts. No, but it's it's still a, it's still a very interesting like I mean I hope not a fluke and just like a spike right but like more like an uh, an indicator for other investors who were passively looking at it. Yes. Um. I I, I want to be mindful of the time and Ooh. and 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 be uh and talk a little bit about like one last point that we haven't yeah. gone to that um because I think sometimes we drink the Kool Aid a little bit right like whale shark and like all of that like this is like. For me, I could like spend day and night and weekends and I, I already do like in that world. But I think this is kind of where like, how do we make that a bit more accessible, right? Like, I mean, okay. we're still doing yeah. a lot of improvement, but um, I want to hear about like, I'm very curious about Unix and, uh, and, okay. and, 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 and why you, uh, you worked on, on that solution. Um, okay, ba basically it, it's like this. So I explained it like this, as we mentioned before, it's like, Everything which is was cryptocurrency and uh, technology is hard to access for average person. And uh, basically what Unix, uh, which is a subsidiary from the Austrian State Printing House, they wanted to venture out into it and say, okay, how can we make some a product which is very easy accessible? In the beginning, the, the card, the chain lock card, basically, you know, in cryptocurrency, this concept of a cold wallet, like a paper wallet. And this idea came out, okay, you can just store cryptocurrencies on it. And uh, I came across uh, that project Chainlock, like I think a year ago, yes. And then I was thinking, wait, you can do much more with this. And uh, for me, it's like, okay, wait, imagine it like this, like a Chainlock card, you have a digital representation of your artwork. And uh, I think you guys had this problem most likely yourself. If you're doing a physical fair and someone was, would buy like a tokenized artwork, how do you give it to your collector? You, you need to force him to download a wallet, send it over. I think it's much more easier if you have something physically to hand over. Absolutely. And I think this is like the conception of digital art. Like, I mean, yes. not just blockchain, but yeah. Exactly. And for me, it's basically like, okay, how can I, can I do this? And they're like, wait, chain lock card is it based on Ethereum. It means it can store NFT tags as well, because what in reality it is, it's a, unified identifier which gives you basically a public address which has on the back side a like under a very secure environment printed private key which means okay for example let's say in in the in the in the gallery a customer is coming in is interested in a digital artwork which has a representation as a non-fungible token or has a digital certificate which is issued on the blockchain the person buys the physical artwork for example and gets additionally the uh, the the how to say that the certificate handed over to him as well yeah and if you buy digital art basically what it gives you it gives you control over the artwork because you know in digital art it's not about the visual representation it's about the right to own it and the right to transfer it yeah. this is basically where the value is because digital artworks everyone can view on the internet it doesn't look different for me. It doesn't look different for you if you own it. The real difference is I control the ownership. And let's say, for example, in a gallery, you have your catalog or you present your uh, digital artwork. How would you sell it to, to a customer which doesn't know how 
basically, I call it always the entry truck into, into blockchain technology. <laughs> nice. Because it's the easiest thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and then out of this, uh, you, 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 you have the easiest way to do it. Why, why I think it, it makes sense in this space, because I talk with people in the art world and what I am doing, they don't understand. It's like what you guys are doing with blockchain and how should we do that? And if you show that in a gallery, uh, how, how do we sell it to our customers? Do we send him a file as a chapbook through email? And yeah. he's paying us money for that? You know, like, and I think something like, 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 like if, you, if you package technology in a non-technology way, it's like mm -hmm. an access uh, for, uh, you know, we, 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 it's like the industry cannot only grow by people who are familiar with cryptocurrency. We need to, uh, so it's our responsibility as participants of the ecosystem. We need to provide solutions that traditional art collectors, you know, he's used to having, let's say, a certificate. He knows what to do with this. He can put it in his vault and keep it there. And on the other way, he can exhibit it. There's also, so he can trade it afterwards. So yeah. he's like, for him, it's like not a, a big hassle. You know, I don't know how many of the people uh, which are listening knowing how to use MetaMask. I think no one. But everyone knows how to use this and if he wants to sell it he will spend time to find out how to send it to somewhere else yeah but and how do you access it from the card like how do you see the token does it create a wallet for you or you, you need to understand the, the, do you understand how, to, uh, how how wallets really work yeah well i don't know like you tell okay. me <laughs> so, so basically the card is your only this is only giving you the representation so each address, if you know my address, you can look on, on OpenSea and you see whatever artworks I have. Mm -hmm. The only thing is you cannot move them out of my account and move them. So what the card is, that on the card is only stored basically the reference of the, of the public key. So it's basically the access key. So the artwork per se is not stored on the card. It's uh, okay. only the, okay. you know, it, it's it, the internet as a blockchain, you don't need to store your files because the file is stored in IPFS. The NFT is issued, but the address which I control with this card is basically, and, and on this public address is the NFT line, mm -hmm. okay. which means if I don't have the secret address, I cannot do anything with it, for your understanding. Very interesting. And so you said it was supported, it was a project supported by the Austrian government? I didn't understand. No, no, no. It's like the Unix is uh, like uh, the Austrian state printing house. They, they are, you know. Pro ah, the printing. Okay. The question, okay. Is, yeah. you know, the question is like this. So. Whom do you trust? Do you trust the Chinese factory? Or do you trust the factory which prints uh, passports? Well, and you know, that's what I was meaning. And now that, that okay. the card is built in a, in a high security environment, because as I say to you, imagine you have stored an artwork, ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars of it. This is who controls that code, controls the assets under this address. And I think that's what it means. Like like you need some uh, like. like Unix is the company, which is a sister company of the Austrian State Printing House, which is focusing more on uh, uh, identity management mm -hmm. and also to, in one way, it's like basically, okay, uh, you know, sovereign ID. And then it was, okay, like blockchain is a topic and where can we go in because they're experienced in uh, doing physical objects. So how can we combine these two things? There's much more coming, but that's at the moment what basically uh, is out there and uh, what is on the market. But to your understanding, it's very interesting to see, you know, like, because I don't know how you're feeling about it. Uh, I think that the moment the ecosystem is closed, but what for me is important, okay, I want to have it, like, let's say, it like at a contemporary art fair in 2028 in Hong Kong. It's normal that people are exhibiting crypto art, and then the collector's coming, he still has no idea about it, but hey, he wants that the artist or, or the gallery is saying, okay, no problem, this is the, the license or how you call it, the, the certificate in a digital form. Yeah, and the transaction is done, and it's easy for him uh, to take it like he would take a physical object as well. So I think this is—I mean, I, it's fascinating. I think this is like where uh, I mean, we could spend another hour on the conception of digital art because there's so much more to do uh, yeah. to ease people into this market. And I think this is where you know we're entering this kind of like what is the place of the object? Is it just a representation of the token? Is it the main uh, artwork? It's, it's very interesting. I mean, on the philosophical level, like we'll have another talk absolutely, like um, um, hopefully very soon. But uh, 
um, yeah, I hope like, uh, so you have a booth at, uh, at Kadaf, so I hope people visit, uh, uh, visit you and ask questions because I think this is a solution that could really uh, work for a lot of people and I hope, uh, uh, you know, Unix considers uh, international market on, uh, on other. Um, no, it, it, it's like, 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 how do I say that? Like, like, it's exactly like this, so like, you know, there are different areas where it makes sense, but for me it's like, there it was like just ticking because there's an immediate demand for it, you know, like. Yeah. And, and it, it, as you said, like, no, the company is definitely focused internationally, let's say it this way. No, <laughs> no, 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 absolutely, absolutely. I'm, uh, I'm just hoping that more organization, you know, like, uh, takes that seriously. I think this is very, no, no, like, showing they, they, how they, advanced they, it is. You know, that the concept that is used for NFTs is long time already, we discussed about it, but basically the first time where we're going public with it was uh, basically during color. Yeah, very nice, was, very nice. I'm really I happy. just discovered the cutoff very late, and then I was like, oh my god, like one month's time. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right, well, thank you so much, Jurgen, and, uh, and I'm Not sure the there will be a lot of questions. And, uh, uh, but uh, yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Okay, perfect. Thank you.